Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well guys, this is an interesting little article. And so this talks about a study done by some scientists from Rice University. And they used the Hawaiian hotspot to study movements of the Earth's poles. And we've talked about this area before, this hotspot before. And when you look at it, this spot is actually stationary. What you're seeing here as you look at this is the formation of islands by the movement, due to the movement of the surface of the Earth over the spot. So we see a greater than a 90 degree angle here. And that's how the whole Hawaiian Islands chain and all these little islands stretching all the way back to Russia came about and through the movement of the plate. And so what this study shows is that there are times when you'll have an actual shifting of, of the Earth, an actual pole shift, not just a magnetic shift. And they call it a, pole, a true polar wanderer. So at some point, the Earth was tilted more like this on the right. And now we have this current uh, set up right here. So you can see that it sh it's shifted. And so we know we're in a magnetic pole reversal right now that's overdue because we basically just have had uh, pole excursions that haven't held. And excursions were the magnetic reversal starts but doesn't finish and it pops back basically to the old place. So we're actually very overdue for a true reversal. <coughs> Excuse me there. And this shows that it does um, actually occur where the whole actual surface of the Earth it rotates. And so you have Velikovsky and Hapgood that have talked about uh, crustal displacement, where the crust shifts because most of the Earth itself is, is mantle, so it's basically liquid. That's the vast majority of it is basically hot molten liquid. And so, you know, again, the surface is kind of like, think of it as an orange peel, where all the white part is basically actually separated from, from the solid part underneath it. So this is just proving that fact that we do have actual movement and the position can actually wander as what happens here. And it just lays more evidence to, you know, why we find woolly mammoths with basically their last meal still frozen in their belly because the woolly mammoths were instantly frozen because of movement on the surface of the earth. And it, so again, we're, we're getting a lot of stuff coming out that is just leaking us the truth, slowly and trickling, as well as, you know, in so many other forms as well. And so another thing that we're seeing right here that's really interesting is a rapid, rapid growth in Arctic sea ice. So we're seeing a wild swing because we went over here from being right in the middle, starting in January, pretty much right in the middle of an average between 2004 all the way up to, to uh, the present year. And then it built up, and come June, July, you had record levels, and then we had a basically a period where it dropped off quite a bit, substantially, almost to the lowest levels in uh, going back to 2004. And now it's starting to climb up dramatically again. So really, basically it's passed all the years besides the 2004 to 2013 rolling average but it's, it's increasing at a very fast pace, so we will keep an eye on that. And so we know it's cold. If you are in the New York area, it's very cold tonight. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a sign of what's coming. And I remember as a kid, always wanting to see snow coming down when I was watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade, you know, the Macy's Parade. Do you guys ever watch that? Anyway, I was always like so excited when there were snowflakes in the air for Thanksgiving and we got a good chance of that uh, in many places. So we're going to have record or near record cold up in New York, New Jersey, and actually even going up into Maine. And uh, this is out of Portland, Maine. Snow moves out, but the record cold's arriving. Bundle up. It's going to be chilly. And then we have Michigan. Snow totals are already starting to mount up there in Michigan and uh, it's definitely piling up. 
But we also have smoke from the California fires now actually visible all the way across the country in New York City. So, you know, this is a huge disaster as you're looking at what many would believe to be the result of DEWSs, uh, just completely destroyed properties. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's got a lot of people riled up with good cause. And many are wondering, is the government concealing California's wildfire death toll? Are they really giving us the truth? You know, are they giving us the truth with Hurricane Michael, Florence, or even going back to Harvey and Katrina? We, you know, really, what's the real truth? And, and where, you know, there's so many people that were missing, and, you know, still many feel that there are a lot that are unaccounted for. And so, you know, we wonder, you know, what's being covered up? And we have a flash flood watches issued as well because of all the rainfall over in California. So you have ash, mud, and debris flows possible as now it's, you know, so much of the area is scorched and there's nothing really to hold uh, those, the land in place. And when you get those type of rains, then you're going to have a high probability of some landslides. And we also have a landslide uh, caused by heavy rain derailing a train near Barcelona, Spain. One person was killed, 44 injured, and so it, it derailed because of that landslide. And so this is getting to be a real common theme that we're seeing out there. And we have Antarctic low bringing storms and sharp cold snaps to part of Australia. And uh, we also have very heavy flooding over in New Zealand. And this is out of Otago Daily Times. And uh, they think the worst might be over, uh, but very, very severe flooding going on over in New Zealand. Now, if you guys eat a lot of salad and you have some romaine lettuce, then uh, throw it out. <laughs> so they have more, basically, stores pulling romaine lettuce off the shelves after another E. coli outbreak. And so the recommendation is, if you have it, just toss it. Don't give it a chance. And so this is bizarre, and this is like one of those things you see in those tabloid um, papers, and you just say, ah, ha, ha, sure, sure, as you're just standing in the checkout line. Goat gives birth to half pig, half human animal. Well, you know, the problem is I, I did a Google on that, and uh, it, it is apparently something that there's like, 20 different papers reporting on and so I guess this is uh, you know something that's worth taking a peek at and this is in the Philippines so a goat in the Philippines has given birth to an unusual looking animal which some said looks half human half pig and this is the, the one in question shocked farmer Josephine Repique 40, said her pregnant goat gave birth earlier this month on her small farm in Sultan Kudarat. And the farmer called the vet, who performed a cesarean session, and removed one healthy kid. However, the other one was pulled out to the gasps of surprise. This little fellow was born without fur and seems to have shiny pale skin with trotters and what appears to be a belly button. It is much bigger than its litter mate. So she said the animal looked like a pig with a mixture of human. And she also had, we were shocked. We can't explain how it looks like that. All of our neighbors flocked into our house to get a good look. Sadly, shortly after giving birth, the mother and the both babies died, prompting fears among some villagers that it was a cursed mutant devil. Which is obviously bollocks. Don't you love that term? Bollocks. I always love that term. So, with the real reason, more likely to be something along the lines of a genetic fault and traumatic birth. Nobody knows what it is, and, you know, unfortunately it, it didn't live and neither did the mother. Um, but definitely strange. And so, you know, it gets you wondering, was this some, you know, either government or ET experiment gone bad? Just gotta wonder. You know, you're, you, you really, you just gotta wonder. Because uh, you know the government experiments on that, and you know many governments experiment on all sorts of things like this. So, hmm, you know, it's just one of those things that make you say, hmm. 
And as we've touched on so often in many different places, nothing is solid and everything is energy. Scientists explain the world of quantum physics. And I hope you guys uh, got a chance to watch the interview with um, April Bailey and Tony Taylor. Um, and because it, it was great and uh, and we'll be doing some follow-ups on it as well and we're talking about all sorts of things from ascension to consciousness and when you when you study quantum physics it, it really does um, you know it, it shows how things are not as we perceive you know there's there's there really is you could view it as there really is a lot of magic in the world in reality because the world conforms to intention it conforms to the observer and so we've seen that and it still is perplexing scientists in so many ways and this statement by Max Planck and who is, he is the originator of quantum theory I regard consciousness as fundamental I regard matter as a derivative from consciousness Consciousness comes first, not matter. Matter comes into being because of consciousness, not the other way around. So, in other words, you could view it as the spirit comes first, not the body. The body doesn't create the spirit. It's just the opposite. The body is the vehicle for the spirit. So we cannot be get behind consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. And so that's, that's a big, huge truth. And that's part of the unifying theory behind all the systems that will eventually come around. You know, and we're going to eventually have a merger of science with spirituality. And, and that's just a matter of time. But there's been so many studies done, so many, and show the power of meditation, the power of intention, which is really so vastly, you know, it's not understood by the, mass, the masses on the whole. But more and more people are waking up all the time. And, you know, that power is so underestimated. The potential is huge. So, so many studies have been done that have been done that show how effective meditation can be. And as it says here, observation not only disturbs what has to be measured, it actually produces it. We compel the electron to assume a definite position. We ourselves produce the results of the measurement. So the paper shows, the studies show that meditators were able to collapse quantum systems at a distance through intention alone. So this is just one of the great mysteries and perhaps the biggest mystery of all that we're starting to really fully understand and we still have a ways to go. But it's a powerful one because it changes the whole view of our universe, our reality and ourselves. And actually, it, it changes it in a positive direction because we can manifest a positive world and a positive life for ourselves and a positive future for our kids. So my friends, as always, please do thumbs up to support the channel. Do share and subscribe. Join the family. Click the bell so you get all the notifications. And may you guys always be blessed with abundant peace, love, health, happiness, and well-being. Namaste, my friends, and God bless.